Hi, right, from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, welcome to another fantastic, bright, and happy, and wonderful, and shiny, yeah. and glorious <laughs> Ask an Engineer. We're here broadcasting live from the Adafruit headquarters in West Soho, downtown Manhattan. I'm Lady Ada, I'm the engineer. With me is Phil on camera control. Hello. And also extremely happy and cheery. As always, we've got a fabulous show. What's on tonight's show, Phil? That's right. Tonight's code is ITO, I-T-O. 10% off everything in the Adafruit store that is in stock. We're going to go over the show and tell. We have Mailbag, Arduino News, Adafruit Learning System, Time Travel Tuesday, Wearable Wednesday, 3D Thursday, Pi Day, new products, lots of cool new products, <coughs> maybe some top secret, Answer your questions. We'll have a trivia question. We'll have a picture of a cat. Not live cat. All that and more on Ask an Engineer. <laughs> yeah. Want to play that again? No. Sorry. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. Yeah. All right. So let's um, uh, get to the show. Yeah, uh, sure. The code is uh, ITO. I-T-O. I-T-O. 10% off everything in the Adafruit store that is in stock. Including the ITO items we put in this week. Including the ITO items. Um, I've been looking forward to putting these ITO items in for like two years. I remember Waz came over like a couple years yeah, ago and I was like, hey, play with this it. stuff. And then I kind of forgot about it. And then I was like, oh yeah, we should put this in the store. Yeah. So we'll be talking about that. Okay, so for everyone who is new to the show or just tuning in, every single week at 9.30 right before Ask an Engineer, we have the show and tell. Show and tell is taking the life on its own. We could just do the show and tell, but we do the show and tell and we do Ask an yes, Engineer. Yes, so you get a, an hour and a half of pure awesome. Yeah, and it's uh, people around the world showing their projects. And this week we had some really cool projects. So yes, let's go through these cool yeah. projects. Okay, first up was Jay. We had only a couple people, but they had really good projects. Jay yeah. showed up and he made a home... Uh, uh, like data center using Raspberry Pi um, for like serving up media files and music and data and I guess like backups and stuff. So he taped his Raspberry Pi onto like a external hard drive and it's running some file systems that are really good for network yeah. mounting distribution stuff. I don't know that much about uh, data distribution. And uh, he said he replaced a computer that was using a lot of power with this little, you know, like two watt. Raspberry Pi, which is awesome. Yeah, we're starting to see a lot of people um, turn the Raspberry Pi into um, kind of not single-use computers, but kind of uh, very specific, low-cost file servers or media yeah. servers, or it just does one thing. And there just, there and are off-the-shelf products that do this, but like this, you know, the Raspberry Pi allows you to have more customization. Like you could have an LCD that displays like how much hard drive is in use. Yeah. Right. Or like, you know, how much bandwidth you've been using, or you can have an LED that lights up or something. I mean, like, there's stuff you can do with the Raspberry Pi that you, you can't do with an off-the-shelf product, which is what I'm looking forward to seeing. Yeah. Because uh, he's like, oh, I want to add more stuff. Like, maybe you'd have a temperature sensor. Yeah. And it would, like, alert you if, you know... Yeah, because it doesn't make sense, and off. it's not easy to have a laptop with... Uh, uh, sensor input output and all yeah. the stuff like it's there's no like hack port on the side of a laptop and also it's like giant laptop yeah, um, yeah. A after that we had Brian Brian did an awesome tour of Fubor labs in Highland Park with his laptop with his laptop really neat tour um, the show and tell is posted um, now on YouTube and we'll have it up on the site if you ever wanted to see a hackerspace and uh, what is in a hackerspace type of equipment a lot of junk <laughs> well no it's a lot of stuff that gets donated a lot of no, stuff no no but it's cool stuff yeah, they, it's just like it's just yeah lasers uh, they're like oh there's a tank printer there's a tank optic company and they donated CCDs, all this stuff yeah it's really neat lasers, and the other thing is um, we tried to help hackerspaces so if you're a hackerspace um, all you have to do is email us and you get treated like a distributor account when we um, uh, mark your account yeah. and you can get anything that we can do discounts up to 40% like all the stuff that we make. We do that so a lot of hacker spaces are um, uh, able to fund themselves. Yeah, um, do that, workshops are cheaper. Yeah, that's one of the big challenges. I think um, Noisebridge is doing a fundraiser right now um, because they, they get in a cash crunch every once in a while. So the hacker spaces that um, we work with, and we have a hacker space map on um, the Adafruit site. Basically, what they do is they hold workshops. They'll um, the 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 person who comes to the workshop will buy the kit from them at the regular retail price, um, but the hacker space uh, pays for the workshops this way. Yeah. And so that's worked out really well. Um, so, anyways, that's that's one of the things if you're hackerspace. But do check out this tour because uh, this is the second or third kind of hackerspace tour that we've had on the yes. show and tell. 
Um, and everyone, uh, I think in the past when hackerspaces were just starting to become a, a, a word that was like, whoa, what is a hackerspace? Um, there wasn't really any videos and tours, and now we do these live, which is kind of neat. Yeah. Um, there was one a couple of weeks ago um, of an old bank building. Yeah, that's cool. Which was really neat because they still had access to the, the one vault. One in Kansas, right? Or what? I think it was, yeah. Um, and then the last one was, and I hope I didn't pronounce the name right, was uh, Janan. Janan. Janan Lee. Um, this was uh, his first Arduino project, but it was really impressive. It was a uh, uh, Arduino keyboard. Yeah. That uh, with multiple octaves. Yeah, with multiple octaves, and he played Super Mario. And then he got it connected it to look like a, a MIDI device, which you can do. Um, actually, I did a tour a long time ago on, on how to do that, where you have a serial port look like a MIDI device, um, and then he could use the keyboard as a MIDI keyboard, and so he could play. Um, like Super Mario World theme. Yeah. He played multiple Mario themes um, using like you know the synthesizer in GarageBand. Yeah. Which is actually a really cool project. We should probably show how to do that. Cause that's it's, really that's, neat. A, that's something that a lot of people will probably be really into uh, making like drum machines or, or synthesizers. Anyways, so we did three really great projects. Yeah. Uh, there were, yeah. Sometimes uh, we have ten people. Sometimes we have three people. Yeah. Right? Sorry. All participants in the show and tell will receive an SC and show and tell sticker. Email support at for it to come and you will get a SC and on the show and tell sticker. Uh, Lady Ada, how does someone get on the show and tell? Thank you for asking me. <laughs> in fact, I know. Uh, go to our Google Plus page at plus.google.com slash plus Adafruit. Look for the post where I say, hey, comment here. Usually, I think we posted it up yesterday or something. And uh, comment there. We'll add you to the circle so that we can add you to the show and tell. Um, on air hangout uh, every Saturday night at 9.30 uh, Eastern Time. Uh, please be sure to ask to be added more than um, like 20 minutes before show and tell. So yeah, we'll get to you. we usually get everyone. Um, all right, let's, let's hit some news. Uh, big news this week, um, Google uh, announced that they have their... Um, they have a patent pledge, just like Twitter. They have a patent pledge. Uh, basically, um, they're saying uh, it's a an open patent, not a search asser assertion um, pledge. They pledge not to sue any user, distributor, or developer of open source software on specified patents unless first attacked. Well, there's there's ten. They've started not all their patents, but a couple of patents. Yeah, and so that's kind of interesting. Um, I know we'll see this in hardware soon. That'll be the next thing, and we'll see who's going to be the first and all that. Yeah. Um, one of the things that uh, you need to have a patent portfolio to start saying, hey, here's what we're going to do and not do with patents. You know, Twitter has a patent portfolio. Google yeah. obviously does. Um, I think in the hardware world, when you see like uh, Samsung and Apple and, and, and everyone kind of suing each other at these big high levels, um, maybe they could figure out a way to get along with this. Um, yeah, it's interesting because I think, like, having talked to a couple companies about, like, that have massive patent por portfolios, it seems like a lot of them, they're like, well, they have these patents. They don't even know they have these patents, necessarily. Like, they just yeah. file patents. You know, these big companies have, like, filed for, like, 100-plus patents a year. They collect them in a portfolio, and they don't care, but then eventually, like, they have a competitor, and then they scour through their patents to find out what they can sue them on. So it's like, yeah. they're not, the patents aren't being used necessarily in the way you'd expect. Like, often they're not actually, they're applied for, but they're never used. Like, it's very common for a company to uh, apply for patents, yeah, sure. but they never actually distribute or manufacture anything that uses that patent, but then they can use it against another company that is, yeah. uh, you know, applying the patent. So it's kind of yeah. a bit of a mess. I like the, I like the trend, though, because um, the idea that uh, if they're, they're not going to, if they're not going to actively sue anyone, you may as well get some value out of it. Like, look how nice we are. You know, it's like it is. It is a wonderful form of marketing. Hey, like we're well, not we're I not going to sue unless we're attacked first. I think it's interesting. They're like, oh, it's only for open source. Yeah. You know, so it's like they don't have to worry about like not necessarily a competitor, but it's like if somebody's going to be using this patent, there's something that they can hopefully benefit from as yeah. well as open source. Yeah. So Bunny was working on like an open patent, patent X thing. Yeah. Um. Just patent commons. Yeah. Um, if and when Adafruit ever gets one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say, like, hey, because um, we don't have a, a patent right now, um, and so it would be hypocritical for us to say, oh, this is what everyone should do with patents, but if, if and when we get one, um, we'll probably do the same thing. We'll probably say, hey, don't mess with us. Well, maybe we'll put it in the commons with other open source hardware companies. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, but I, I do think that will be the next thing we see is uh, hardware companies yeah. starting to do uh, a very similar thing. I also think, um, you know, around this time everyone's doing taxes and they're like, we spent how much on lawyers? 
for patents and like what are we're in lawsuits? What were we thinking? Yeah, it can get really expensive. It can get really expensive and look at all the good you can be doing. All, you could be hiring developers, you can be hiring people, you can be you could be doing more than yeah than lawsuits for something that you may never even use. Kind of silly. Okay. All right. Next up. Next up in the news. Uh, well, we have mailbag. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Hi, pack it. Hey, pack, pack it. Pack it. mailbag. Mailbag. Every week we get letters, lots and lots of letters. Not and physical letters always. Yeah. Tends to be email. emails, tweets, videos. This one is from Bailey. I would just like to say thank you for all the fantastic support you offer your customers because it really helps our buying and making experience and all of a higher caliber than any other online store I've ever used. Thank you from Bailey. Thanks, Thanks Bailey. Bailey. That's pack it to mailbag. Next up, from the jobs board. This is a cool job. So the Adafruit jobs board, adafruit.com slash jobs. Yeah, what is jobs. this, like some sort of bicycle? Yeah, Faraday tech? Bicycles is looking for a full-time embedded systems engineer to join their team. That's cool. It's like a, if, no, every, every bicycle maker needs an embedded systems engineer. Yeah. So um, uh, this, is really, this is a really cool job. There's a, a job that was posted today from Other Lab. Um, uh, this is a, a, kind of a startup uh, out in San Francisco. Um, our mm -hmm. friend... Uh, they were on the Mike show and a week ago. Saul are, are, are part of uh, that company, and they were just on um, with the White House for um, a maker hangout. Mm -hmm. The word maker is now a real thing. It's out there. Uh, the White House did a, a, a hangout you were on with President Obama. Yes. It's it's over. I was the maker. It's over. Maker is out there. It's it's a real thing. It's it's a it's a profession. It's a hobby. It's a movement. It's a trend. It's cool. All right. So um, adafruit.com slash jobs is where makers can post their skills to get jobs or companies, cool companies, can look for cool people yeah. that they want to work with. Um, every single job that comes in, we look at it and we approve it or we'll tell them no. Like if it's like a headhunter or someone who wants like, you know, some uh, scam mm -hmm. or scam, trick yeah. or something like that, we just say no. Only cool jobs. Only cool jobs. So it has a pretty good hit rate. I think uh, every every company that's posted um, their jobs up, they've found good candidates through the site. Yeah. Cause it's a so if you're a maker, you yeah. can apply, you can get like a really cool job at like Faraday Bicycles, which just sounds neat to yeah. Faraday Bicycles. So yeah, if you are um, looking to hire people or you need a job, check out the jobs board. It's free. Yeah. You yeah. have to register. That's all. So that you know yeah. we can like stop spammers. We have to like have people register. Yep. That's all. Okay. Next up, um, this is kind of our uh, site news. Um, I'll take this off for one second. Um, so we have a new category. Ooh. Um, I did a major categorization. Yeah. So Adafruit.com/slash/materials is our new section and it has all sorts of kind of new and futuristic materials tonight we're going to go over some of these products but um you've yeah, been there's like stuff i was like what is suger is it prototyping and i'm like no you know what it's like a material yeah. so i decided like let's i regrouped a lot of the categories on the store and like hopefully i'll keep recategorizing yeah. them um and improving and, and hopefully shortening the list of, of categories to make it a little bit easier to find stuff. But um, but I do like the idea of having a materials category because we are collecting, especially with um, flora stuff and wearable stuff and all these conductive um, parts. A lot of these are just like, I found something that's conductive that's not just like wire. I'll usually um, get it and put it in the store. So now we have a home for them. Yeah. And a lot of the materials are conductive stuff. A lot of them are for rapid prototyping. A or lot sensing, of them, yeah. yeah, some sort of sensor. For um, stuff. You know, we just recently had a um, partnership with MakerBot where we sold uh, MakerBots. You know, maybe one day we'll have more three D printing materials. You know, this is all stuff that we're getting into. So, new materials. It's adafruit.com/slash/materials. Next up, some news in the world of Arduino. This one um, came from our forums. Um, this is really neat. Uh, Lady, did you want to describe what these are? These yeah, are these are these really cool diagrams. And what I really like about these diagrams is um, they're basic circuits, like how to you know make an audio amp or how to uh, drive an LED or you know looks like some Charlie plexing over there. But what I think is really cool is that um, they have a kind of like a kind of a modern look to them. They have this like graphic style. That's really nice. Another thing that I really thought was cool was like there's little callouts for every component to tell you what those components are, or, like whether they're required. So, anyways, I thought I thought this was kind of neat. Like the resistors, it shows you like in a little circle what the resistor will physically look like. Yeah. But anyways, these and, are kind of. And uh, George in the chat just posted up links to this. So super handy. Um, Four members doing a really good job. I like it. It's it's like a different style. Yeah. Okay. Next up, Adafruit Learning System. Some new and great tutorials in Adafruit Learning System. The best learning system online, except no, except no <laughs> imitations. Um, we have some new uh, guides on. Oh yeah. Yeah, and so the first one. This was everything that you need to know, tips, tricks, and more on making your own laser cut enclosures from 
Paint yeah. and Dragon Phil. Oh, we Who's also have right the uh, ADXL tutorial. I think that didn't get put in. Or is that the next one? It's going to be the next uh, one. Sorry, that looks yeah. like the Look at you skipping ahead. You're skipping I don't know. Ahead. I'm looking, I, I can't see the little photos. Um, yeah. yeah, this is a, a Phil B. Uh, Paint Your Dragon tutorial. He did a little write-up about how he designs acrylic enclosures. It's a really awesome, detailed tutorial. I mean, it is a skill. Um, what's interesting is when people first got you know, laser cutters and were using them for making stuff like a decade ago, um, people just were making really basic boxes that you'd glue together and it kind of sucked. And then like people like came up with all sorts of techniques like live hinges and T-slots and dragon claws and all sorts of like yeah. s techniques and styles. So we've gone from having like really kind of basic sandwich cases to very beautiful, um, elegant enclosures made from a, a, you know, acrylic using all these techniques yeah. um, that have been accumulated over the years. And that's, I think that's really neat because it's, it's, um, Sort of like a knowledge commons. Yeah. You know, and, and people have like, uh, taken this tool and really done something. I also like I also like Phil style because he uh, basically says you're gonna have to do a lot of trial and error, and, and that helps you with the design, but it's also repeatability because you're making something usually for someone else to make. Yeah. So one of the opener photos was here's like you know 20 different iterations of the pie box. And that's what it takes to get to the, the one good one. Yeah. And this is not um, anything uh, uncommon or, or new. Like when you do any type of product design or any type of enclosure design, you usually go through quite a bit. Yeah. So I thought that was neat. All right, next up. Um, next up, we have a little mini tutorial on the ADXL 345 digital accelerometer. It's not that hard to use, but we wanted to have a little write up on how to use it. So uh, if you really like the analog digital, um, the, sorry, the analog devices, digital accelerometers, uh, check out the tutorial. It shows you how to use it, how to use our code, how to install the library, all that good stuff. Yeah. And then this one you're working on right now. It's not done yet. Yeah, it's like there's a little... Well, there's updates to the learning system, and there's a little bug that came in, and we have to fix it. And uh, then it was like time for show and tell. But I'm doing a little tutorial on how to use our um, SMD breakout boards. Yeah. And then um, we do have, uh, uh, for the folks who really just mm -hmm. uh, play, pay close attention to the, the learning system, um, we do frequent updates, and we have a, yes. we have a big rollout. Um, mm -hmm. So let's go to the learning system right now, and uh, talk about some of the new changes. Okay, uh, so let's go to um, let's go to a tutorial, like maybe go to the laser cut and close tutorial. Yeah, we'll go to the laser so, cut one that we just talked about. Try to think. So first up, up top here we have the um, sort of like, like a breadcrumb. Not, not, not quite breadcrumbs. It's yeah. more like a history. So for example, if you go up and you're like, oh, I want to see more tutorials about like tools and stuff. You can click on. You just go tool, to tools because it's in the tool category. And that will right take there. you to that category, and so you yeah. can navigate the categories a little bit better, um, which I think is really neat. Yeah. Um, and then another thing that's nice go is whoa, uh, if you scroll to the bottom, it'll say it's kind of faint, but yeah, it says. Yeah, when it was last updated. When it was last updated. Um, there's actually a lot of the changes that have been made are behind the scenes, and you won't see them as yeah. much. But that's one of them, so you can see when it, um, yeah. the project was. The other neat thing is as you um, use this, the, the next step will tell you the name of it. Yeah, it doesn't say next you. page. It actually says, like, what is the title of the next page. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Um, some bugs with the PDFs were fixed, maybe. Yeah, so PDFs are one of the most uh, common features that people uh, really like. So look at these beautiful PDFs. Yeah, and they have so when it's been updated oh. and it has all the... Yeah, so hopefully the PDFs will be less flaky. Um, a lot of the edits were actually in the back end, the editor. The editor is much, much easier to use. Um, it's, yeah. it's always been really easy to use, much easier to use than any other learning system I've ever, I've ever had to work with. Um, but with these updates, it's much, much better. So a lot of it is in, in the admin side. But, you know, that's still pretty, you know. We'll see more tutorials because it'll be easy for us to, to make yeah. it. Maybe one day we'll do a... a write up or a, a demo of the the back end for yeah interested. and what's neat about this is mm -hmm. if you wanted to um uh add I think if you click on an image that that changed the, the this that changed yeah. oh i think it shows you like where there's the breadcrumbs it shows you what tutorial it's yeah in. and the other thing is if mm -hmm. if you're uh reading a tutorial about a specific product you can always um hit add all to cart um if you wanted to uh, add all the items that you're learning to to build on. So yeah, okay. Took a couple updates, but yeah, most of it most of it was in the back end. The, the admin editor yeah. is like totally different. Cause I go to, or I was starting to write the tutorial today is for practice, and I was like, wow, it's like you can drag and drop elements yeah. and stuff. It's cool. So, <clears throat> um, okay. Adafruit learning system. Okay. Next up. 
Time Travel Tuesday. Every Tuesday we have Time Travel Tuesday. And this is a look back in time of all things. Some of it's in the maker world, some of it's in the science world, some of it's in the technology world. In okay. March 25th, 1954, the first commercially available color television was sold by RCA. RCA is still around, too. Still around. Those are the only colors that it had, though. It was like you could only have like blue, orange, red, and pink. Yeah. That's pretty much it. In 1885, the first commercially produced continuous strip photographic film was manufactured March 26, 1885 by Eastman Eastman Dry Plate Film Company, Rochester, New York. George Eastman had received the patent in 1884, intending roll-style film to replace bulky, inconvenient glass plate photography that had preceded it. That's so cool. Next up, in 1773, Nathaniel Bostich, born in Salem, Massachusetts, some 150 years ago, which the trial sped superstition across otherwise reputable town, is known for early innovation in Mac-making in the colonial United States, as well as the first insurance actuary as president of Essex Fire and Reinsurance Company in Salem. Witchcraft and insurance and Molly making. really coming up with like <laughs> Yeah, Molly RCO does these. 1759, a letter written to a friend dated March 30th, 1759 by Gian- Giovanni Arduino first proposed uh, stratigraphic chronology via geological classification system that divided formations into four categories. Primitive, secondary, tertiary, volcanic, or quaternary. I think that's what it says. Um, kind of neat. So this uh, was proposing that you could do geography by uh, time of rocks, basically. Yeah. But uh, Giovanni Arduino being the name. I mean, that's probably a common Italian name. Arduino is a last name? I don't think so. I think it was Arduino was a king, but I don't think it's a common name. That's the name it's the name of a bar, at least. Yeah. It's probably a couple people. Yeah. So anyways, kind of neat. All right. How's time time for Tuesday? Oh, we were going to have, like, Time Travel Tuesday with Ada Free History, or is that, like... I do sometimes, yeah. Is it, is if I get it? to it. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, the problem is, and uh, I guess we'll go back to... Uh, we'll get to uh, Wearable Wednesday in a second. Yeah. So, Time Travel Tuesday, Molly and I do it. If, if I manage to get a couple minutes, I go through Adafruit history for the last, like, six, seven years. Yeah. Make, because I ran the Make blog yeah. when we first started it. I sort of ran then, out of history. And then, oh, no, no, there's too much. And then before that, my post mm-hmm. on Hackaday since I started Hackaday. Yeah. So I go back, and it just takes it just takes a while to do this back in time thing. Can we do some sort of weird RSS thing that we like? It grabs like historic posts. No, Google's banned RSS. I don't know if you've heard. Mm-hmm. No. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, it is. It, it, it's fun because you have to look and there's see. There's no tools for this, unfortunately. Um, there's a company. Um, that I think it was called Time Spot. I don't know the name of the company now, but they they'll look back at your Flickr photos because I look at our Flickr photos too. Okay. Um, it just takes a long time, but it's fun. Hi. So like, like once a month, I do a big maker one now. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So okay. I was like, I'm the show. I was like, I thought we did something yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, but this is more historic. We like yeah. time No, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's a guy named Arduino. I gotta put in there. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Uh, next up. Uh, Wearable Wednesday. Every Wednesday we try to do some cool stuff with wearable electronics. Becky's on jury duty, so some of the projects that work on are going to come out next week. It's going to be really neat. Um, this week, though, she did a video with some of the new products we have. And we'll get to the new products, but let's show the video for now. Welcome to Wearable Wednesday, everybody. Today I wanted to quickly check in and tell you about uh, the new bare conductive paint pens we are carrying at Adafruit. We're also carrying the pot of paint as well as the bare conductive robot greeting card. It's really cool. It has a little circuit already drawn on it for you. It comes with the battery and a blinking LED and the paint pen. And then when you close the switch, you get a nice little blinking robot. So this stuff is really fun for kids to play with. It's water soluble and skin safe, which means it's uh, not bad to uh, touch with your fingers. And um, you can have a lot of fun with it. I've already been playing in my sketchbook. I made a series circuit and a parallel circuit. And I also uh, drew this um, paper version of my uh, plush game controller, which I'll show you how to make next week. And um, I use it with the capacitive touch sensing library and Flora's onboard keyboard capabilities to use it as a game controller for some emulators online. Let me try my hand. That's a Pac-Man. Okay, so that's a lot of fun, and I hope that you also have a lot of fun with the Bear Conductive product, and I'll see you on another Wearable Wednesday. Okay. 
And, yeah, that was our video for Wednesday. And then we have um, 3D Thursday. So every Thursday we have a ton of posts yeah. on the site with all sorts of 3D related stuff. This week, um, because Google Glass is in the news, um, I thought I would have this uh, th this one on here. So you can print your own Google Glasses if you want. Um, yeah, little They're fake -like. Google Glasses, yeah. You can pretend like you're part of the party. If yeah. you're one of the like, 5,000 people. Yeah, we know. actually know a lot of people. We weren't selected. Um, Everyone and else we know us. So I think what the, the goal is, is for all these There's people... There's probably a big list that says, don't give these people the list. They pro yeah, we probably weren't selected because we would take it apart and um, figure out everything about it and uh, reverse engineer it. Um, you know, we did do that with the Connect, and maybe maybe we're on the ban list for... Uh, That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, but we do know a lot of people with them, so I hope the goal isn't to... Um, Figure out ways to just record and monetize us, because if yeah. we're, you know, there's only there's only going to be two types of people, right? Like someone's like looking at you with these, and and people who are getting looked at. Yes. So I don't know, I don't know how it's going to work out. But anyways, you can print your own if you wanted to. I suspect there's going to be all sorts of fun pranks and weird things with this now. Yeah. So okay, next up, Pi Day. Pi Day. Wow, we're all way, all way through the week. Yeah, on Fridays we have Pi Day where we post way too many things about Raspberry Pi. And you're just picking out one thing from each. I'm picking one thing from each okay. um, because uh, we oh, just we have a lot of new products to go through tonight. So this one I thought was interesting. This one, if you can look really close, this is a theremin and it's being played by a robot arm. So the robot is playing the theremin, and it's all being powered by. A Raspberry Pi, and if you look, you can see our cobbler in there. So, uh, really neat stuff. Something else, some breakout board or something. Yeah, and this is, I think, from the Bristol Maker Fair. But a uh, very cool, um, very cool project. Robot playing the um, All right. the theremin. So, what will robots do if you give them a chance? They'll play musical instruments. Let's do that. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna do new products now. Uh, okay, the code right. is Ito, I T O, and that'll get you 10% off everything in stock, including uh, a lot of these things. Oh, you know what? Shoot, I did what? have one thing before the product. Sorry, sorry what? for Pi Day. Um, Pi Addict. This is a magazine called Pi Addict. They sent us a copy, and uh, here's a, an ad. Um, they let us put an ad in here. This is uh, Adabot with Hi, the Adabot. Adafruit learning system, and uh, it's a cool magazine. This is the second um, community-made. This one made is like all about Elite, the game. So yeah. it's like 20 pages long, and it's like I never played Elite. I guess there's like the people who are like really into it, but I didn't, so I don't understand like most yeah. of this. So this but is the cool. second. This is the second Pi magazine. It's cool. People are making <laughs> these these magazines left and right. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, back to new products. Um, it's new product time, Lady Ada. Yeah. All right. First Hi, up. New, new, new. Speaking of Raspberry Pi, these are back in stock. This is the Raspberry Pi starter kit with Raspberry Pi. These go very very fast. We put them in just like. Less than 24 hours ago, we have a bunch of them. Um, you can get them for 10% off uh, with our code. Um, it comes with a pie. It comes with a pie. Um, while supplies last. While supplies last. So that is the Raspberry Pi starter kit. Um, get them while they're hot. Okay, next up. We have some new photos. Yeah. These are very nice photos. Yeah, we're taking right. photos of all of our stuff over. Um, John Janier is cranking away at these yeah, things. Nice. All right, and then we have. Um, we just have like an, another update for the extrusion stuff. We now have these double corners, so we had corners with one hole. Now they have one with two, so they're a little stronger. Yeah. They're also good for the uh, double duck extrusion. Anyways, you know, good stuff to have. Yeah, and what would you use this for? Um, this is for like a CNC project or a robotics project where you want to connect the extrusion, as you can see on the next photo. Yeah. Clicky. Yeah. So this is just a little bit stronger. Maybe we'll put up with a little bit more abuse. Yeah. Anyways. Cool stuff. Yeah. Okay. Next up. Oh, we got the screen. Okay, yeah. so um, the really big physically um, new product is um, we put in the Pixel Chi displays um, like two weeks ago, and those are uh, sort of like a v daily visible display that's uh, 10 inches. And we also wanted to put in this display that's uh, also 10-inch display. It's not daylight visible, but it's half the price because it doesn't have that extra monochrome layer. Um, it is like a normal TFT, it's an IPS, uh, in-plane switching, uh, high resolution display. They're, these are often used for tablets. I think this is originally was spec for tablet use. It does not have a touch screen. Um, working on getting capacitive touch screens at this time, we do not have them. Um, they're actually quite hard to get. Um, but uh, we do have this display that doesn't have a touch screen, but it does have these really nice mounting tabs, which I like. And as you can see, you can uh, view them from any angle. So I will go over here to the overhead. 
and I will um, show off the screen. I'll show off the screen and I'll turn it on. So this is the screen itself. Um, so you can see there's these mounting tabs. Um, it's quite thin. It's only like five millimeters thick. It has an LED uh, backlight, which is really nice. It has this connector cable, this LVDS connector cable, which goes to the driver board. Um, the driver board can use um, composite, VGA, uh, both the composite NTSC or PAL, uh, VGA input and LVGA um, HDMI. You can power it from five to 24 volts. It has a little um, menu thingy that you can disconnect if you don't want to, but it, um, <clears throat> it's a, an on off and like menu um, thing. Uh, let me see, let me plug this in. Useful. What is iPlane switching? What does that mean? It means that you can see from any angle. So, so iPlane switching means you can see from any angle. Yeah, hold on. Let me turn this on. Hello? Did I power this off? Maybe we turned it off before we... I did turn it off, but... Hold on. Live demo. Okay. Well, we can always come back to it and after you turn it on. I don't know what happened. It's just working. I must have pressed something button or maybe unplugged something. Um, okay, we'll come back to it. We had it plugged sad. in before the. Yeah. Uh, we had it plugged in for the. Uh, right before the show. We did have it working. Oh no, I feel bad. Okay, I will get it working. Maybe we'll move to the next item and then I'll, I'll figure out what I unplugged. Okay. Incorrectly. Next up. Oh, uh, humidity sensor. Yeah, this is. Um, we have a bunch of temperature humidity sensors, but I really like this one because it's I squared C, and the other humidity sensors we've had. Um, they're usually like a one wire protocol um, or we have a soil one but it's like waterproof soil. This is kind of a more basic one that's I squared C and um, it comes in a really nice connector which I can show in the overhead because nothing has to be turned on. So um, it comes with this cable and this is sort of like a, a plastic um, contact, uh, sorry, a plastic um, kind of foam thing. It's not weatherproof like it doesn't say it's weatherproof or waterproof but you know you can put it outside it's got this nice potting compound um, I'd say this is much more rugged and we have some example code for it and it's it's got a DS 18 B 20 missive um, sensor and then for the uh, humidity sensor there's a capacitive sensor inside so, so what would you use this for um, this is good for like if you want to do temperature humidity sensing outdoors and stuff yeah okay no, okay. And I got a couple. Of, I'll go to the photos of it real quick while you're playing around over there. Oh wait, now it's working. I don't know. I just, I just power cycled it. Okay. Yeah. You want right. to go back to the display? Yeah. Sorry. Let's go back to the display. I don't know what I did. I just like turned it on and then it didn't work. I think I had the power supply switched wrong. Yeah, we okay. have a new um, Ask an Engineer table and it has power outlets in it, so I think I we know, must have I'm unplugged still, it and plugged it in. I'm still learning what cable is here. Um, yeah. Anyways. Everything's great. Um, so I have it connected up to my Pi, and um, this is the display. So I just want to show the why. Yeah, even over a webcam, you can see that it's viewable at any angle. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, like at a certain point, like your eyes are like, well, wow. I can't see that much, but you don't get that weird. With like with cheaper TFTs, it inverts yeah. where you can't see. It so it'd be well. good for um, like an arcade project with a Pi. Yeah, this could be really good for like. Arcade video display, it's got kind of a nice widescreen um, image, it's got like, you know, a really beautiful um, extreme yeah, even over screen. our web, even over our webcams you can see how sharp it is. Normally when you look at screens through these um, cameras, um, you can't see anything yeah. on the screen, so that's so pretty impressive. You can see even from an angle, there's no color distortion. I mean, it's, it's, it's distorted because it's at an angle, but it's not um, color distorted. And um, yeah, it's got a really nice white backlight. Super bright. And you can put a reflector on the back to make it even a little bit brighter. Oh, really? Well, you use like foil or something. Yeah, so the light and that'll even be that. brighter. That's cool. Um, so it's really thin and it's, and it's really, really bright. And I really like these displays. I've tried a couple displays. Um, again, it does have a touch screen. Yeah. Uh, we're working on getting touch screens. And what's the resolution? This is 1280 by 800. Okay. So that's pretty much as high as you can get for a 10 inch display. Um, this mm. is a, a standard sort of tablet. And display. what's the backlight in this? How does it, what's the backlight it, it's, technology? Uh, it's all white LEDs, so there's white LEDs around the edges, mm -hmm. and then there's this really hardcore diffuser that diffuses it very evenly. I mean, these are used in 
I mean, I don't know exactly which model of, of, of laptop or tablet, but they're used in um, tablets and laptops. Is yeah. What this display was used for originally. Um, but it would be really great for any kind of embedded project. Um, I'm using it with the Pi, but you can use it with anything that has HDMI, VGA, or composite output, which is like pretty much everything. Yeah. With the trend of embedded Linux computers, like the BeagleBone and the uh, Pi, um, I think we'll see these type of displays used a lot more by hobbyists. Yeah. So that's cool. It's definitely, this is really easy if you have it plugged in right to uh, use it. And then there's a good menu. Yeah. Which I can just pop up really fast. So there's like, you know, brightness, contrast. Um, that's a pretty nice menu. Saturation. And you Okay. Yeah. You can like do all sorts of stuff. Functions, auto off. Um, blue screens, sleep modes, uh, display ratio if you want to do 4x3 instead of 16x9. Um, you can also um, reverse the display and stuff. I don't know mm. what you would need to do that for, but um, like burn and stuff. Anyways, all sorts of settings. So yeah, super easy to use. Very cool. Nice display. Okay. Just, for, just remember to turn it on. Yeah, it requires that. power. Requires power. Turn, turns out. Okay. All right. That's my demo. Uh, next up. Here is the bare conductive. Yeah, so this is the stuff that we were showing the, the video uh, um, that Becky did. And, um, and there's a pen and there's paint. Yeah, we have a couple of different technologies. So let's just show them really fast over here. Yeah, I mean, that photo is really good too. But we also um, yeah, have it around. live. So the, um, the bare conductive comes with in a tub and uh, it's just kind of like a goopy paint. Um, it kind of it's like a paint, and you can use a paintbrush with it. Um, you can silk screen it as well if you're just silk screening. Um, you also have it as a pen. Um, the pen is kind of you know it's not a ballpoint. It's sort of like a, a hollow plastic pen, so you squeeze the ink out. And then we have um, these really cute little cards um, that you can make with the bare conductive ink and then a little battery and then some LEDs so that when you close it like could the conductive paint pens be used as conductive adhesive they're not super gluey I mean they are an adhesive um, just because they are uh, you know they are a little goopy but um, they're Is it like fabric paint would you say consistency yeah it's like fabric paint it's it's like you know it, it will glue like glitter or something but it's not I wouldn't use it to glue two things together yeah. uh, in a permanent fashion. But yeah, so they are, they are, it is conductive. So it comes with, um, we have three different things. We have these little kits that blink, um, tab, and a pen. A little out of focus there. Maybe you can yeah. pull something up to the camera. Hello. Yeah. I don't know why sometimes there you it go. freaks out. Okay. Yeah, we have the tab. Um, the pen is kind of what I would suggest people start with because, or the, or the cards, because the cards actually come with some projects. But the pen is just like it's ten dollars, really easy. This is if you want to do like silk screening and stuff. I, I feel uh, like it's a lot. A couple questions. Someone wants to know if they can use this to fix elastometric keypads that they've lost their carbon. Yeah, I mean, I believe this is a carbon-based ink. I don't know exactly. Um, I mean, it might work. I don't, I don't know. I've never like fixed. Um, I know that usually silver paint is what they is used mm -hmm. to fix keyboards. Um, I mean, it might work. It's a little goopy. And what's the dry time estimate on this, you think? I don't know if it says so. I think it takes like 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, I think it was 15, 20 minutes max, depending yeah, on how much it Yeah, I think on. it depends on the humidity and stuff. You can check the um, the product page, the data yeah. sheet. I like to like so the data sheet. Someone in the chat said they painted circuit pass for speakers that he mounted on his wall. That's cool. Yeah, you can do it. Not going to be very loud speakers, but it's... It will work. The neighbors will like it because it won't be so loud. Yeah, that's true. cool. Um, I think it, it is a little bit resistant. Yeah. Resistant. And then we had. I guess you want you want to show this. this yeah. Is, this sure. is from. Uh, I guess we can go to the overhead. On um, this. it's actually. It's kind of different. I'll just hold it up. So yeah. This is um, a flora, and it, this is kind of a it flora used, controller. Yeah. It's used sort of as a, not adhesive, but um, I think she probably glued or taped the flora down, and then um, used the bare conductive and sort of glued over the pads yeah um, and like I, you know I don't think this is holding the flora down I think the floor is taped on the back or something but or used like spray um, spray adhesive but you know it will stick to the pads um, and so this was a little like you yeah. know 
game controller that you can make. You can also, you know, like the um, fellow who was on the show and tell, you can make a little um, instrument or something and have, um, you know, MIDI come out. Okay. A couple questions that folks have. Uh, do you know the resistance length? Uh, how, how far? There, there's a, that's in the data sheet for sure. Oh, great. It's in the data yeah. sheet? Okay. And then... Uh, what is electrical noise and how can it be reduced? Maybe that's one for later. That's not that, yeah. Uh, yeah, save that one for later. Um, uh, right after we're done with new products. And here's, here's a demo of it with the LEDs. Okay, I want to go over to the yeah, overhead? Sure okay, where's uh -huh. the overhead? It's too dark to see, but there's two battery holders in series with um, two pink LEDs. This is good. This is great for workshops, especially for like young folks it's who want to easy. Who want to see how electricity works. You can just paint it on there. That's yeah. kind of cool. Very neat. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got uh, this is one of my favorite new products of all time. This is a kind of a classic, I think, cool Adafruit product. ITO. Lady Ada, what is ITO? Um, ITO is a clear conductive liquid that can be dried onto plastic or glass. Um, most common is used with uh, pet plastic, which is this flexible plastic. It can also be used with glass. So um, I have uh, two pieces here. Um, this is the glass. There's no light on it. What do you want? Uh, there's no way to get any more light here. I, I, I can if you want me to move really fast. Yeah, can you show me the exit? I sure. don't know if it's going to be visible to see the. Uh, usually we have a light over here, I thought. We can bring one of the, uh, next time we can bring one of the yep. neck lamps. Oh, that's so much better. Okay. Yay. Okay, that's, like, super visible now. Um, yeah, because I have a, a multimeter here. And um, so if you put on resistance, it's visible. You can measure the um, resistance of the ITO. And it's about, like, 15 ohms per inch. Um, is that uh, on the multimeter? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. Yeah, there you go. So this is about like 34 ohms. So it's not like you know it's not going to be like a short circuit. It's going to be um, quite uh, quite resistive. Um, it's used for signal usually, not power, but for um, small uses of like LED lighting or if you want to do like capacitive touch sensing. Yeah, this is considered a short. Um, it's only coated on one side. So like this side is coated but this side is not. And that's normal. It's um, pretty rare to get glass that's coated on both sides. Um, you can use this to make, um, like if you're doing projects at home, if you want to make your own uh, EL or if you want to make your own um, OLEDs, like because you're you know, studying optoelectronics and you have um, the materials usually you use, this is a substrate that's pretty common. LCDs also use this as a substrate. Um, capacitive touch often uses this as a substrate. Um, so, you know, you can pattern it. Um, usually it's patterned um, by photoresist. It's probably too difficult for most people to do at home. Uh, you may be able to use a laser cutter. You can definitely use um, the flat edge of a knife or tweezers. Yeah. Um, so I have a pair of tweezers here. Yeah, and here's, a, gone. here's an example right here. You got yeah. It's glass. So you can um, you can scrape away with um, these tweezers aren't sharp enough. Yeah. But like, you can um, scrape away a line. You know, it's scrape, you know, if you're if you're using a ruler, you can scrape a line, or you can use like a laser um, cutter or any other kind of like a sharp tool. Um, I don't know. A mill probably wouldn't work. Again, usually these are, use, are photo patterned on, so it, it's not like the easiest thing in the world to use, but it's definitely something that, you know, with a little bit of experimentation, I think people come up with some uh, ways to pattern it. Once you've patterned it, you can use it just like uh, any conductive substrate, so you could put chips and resistors and capacitors on it and glue them down, a um, little bit of super glue, and then maybe use uh, silver ink or, um, you know, the bare conductive paint. So, for example, here is um, the pet. The pet's a little easier to work with. Um, but it's more resistive. Yeah. It's a trade off. So, this is um, a piece of pet plastic with um, a line down the center. Um, so, it's uh, resistive this way. 
Yeah. Yeah, sure, what do you want? Can you hold this up? Yep. And they do not have three hands, unfortunately. Um, yeah. There you go. So it's resisted this way. But like 100 ohms or so. And then it's resistive this way, also about 100 ohms or so. Um, but it's not resistive across here um, once you've made the cut in the in the plastic. And then you can use um, a battery such as this one with alligator clips. Let's see if they got the battery right. Yeah. So oh, yeah. you can use this to. Um, I just I just glued down this. Uh, LED with uh, bare conductive paint and then I'm using the resistivity of the ITO as sort of like a resistor. So you have um, like a, a transparent material with an LED embedded yeah. in it. You could do some really amazing art with the stuff. Yeah, so it's an interesting material. Um, the pet's again a lot easier to work with. Um, the ITO on glass is, you know, it's much more clear. It's more translucent. Um, this has like a 95% translucency and this is like, it's glass. So it's, it's like pretty much yeah. transparent. So it depends what effect you're looking for. Um, it's not meant, again, it's not meant to carry a lot of current, but I think, you know, it's very resistive. Um, I wouldn't use it with more than like 12 volts or so. I wouldn't try to pass more than like 100 milliamps through it maybe. Maybe okay. if you're really pushing it, you could probably spike it up to 500 milliamps, but it's actually not meant for high current applications. It's mostly meant for sensing, maybe you could do a couple yeah. of LEDs. I've seen some um, really beautiful uh, glass tables that uh, they had LEDs kind of suspended in it. Yeah. That was kind of neat. Like you can do all sorts of neat stuff with this. Yeah. Um, normally if you have something clear um, to see through, you can have an LED as some type of status indicator. So. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's kind of interesting. Um, you can't solder to ITO. Uh, it's, this is plastic and glass and the film is like, you know, microns thick, but you can use alligator clips. You can use the um, conductive copper tape with conductive adhesive. If it has conductive adhesive, you can just tape the tape on. You can solder the tape. We yeah. can solder the tape and then tape it on. It's probably yeah. better because you're less likely to melt the plastic. Um, and of course, alligator clips work, work really well for with both the glass and the uh, plastic ITO. Yeah. And what's neat is it's um, it's conductive, so you can use it as some type of um, like an input device. Yeah. So if you want to use it with like you know capacitive touch, that that that's a, an excellent use for the stuff because. Um, it's conductive, and that's what they do use for most capacitive touch buttons is, is ITO on uh, plastic or glass. Yeah. Yep. Cool stuff. Okay. So hopefully... In our materials section. Yes, yeah, so this is kind of a weird thing. I, I worked with this in um, in an optoelectronics lab, but uh, it's really hard to get outside of labs, so I'm really happy that we have yeah. this stuff um, in both plastic and glass types. Okay. Next up, a box of wires. Yes. <laughs> I don't actually, well, I, mean, I guess I can demo this, but yeah, it's basically just wires in a box. Um, there's six spools of 24, or sorry, 25 foot long wire, solid core, 22 American wire gauge. We have for breadboarding. It's kind of cute because it has these holes in it, and so you can pass the wires through. And then um, it's kind of like a little wire holder, which is kind of handy because that way you're not stacking the spools on your desk. And I'll, I'll just hold it yeah. up. It's actually easier to show this way. Yeah, little wire spools. Here, and, uh, let me go to the bigger screen now. Huh? Yeah, you can you, you can open up and there's a they're on a little roller and then uh, this is kind of nice because when you need it you can just pull more wire out. Oh, so easy. So yeah. Lovely. Comes in all the most common colors. I don't know. It's cute. I like yeah, it. I like it. Super handy. I want it on my desk now. Okay. Next up. Pixels. Pixels. Yeah. Is that really? We went through everything? Yeah, we went through everything. Oh, okay. This is the last product. Okay, so the Pixels. Luckily, these have been on all this time, and so I know they work. Um, the Pixels are basically the same as the Flora NeoPixels that we're using, but um, instead of being sewable, they're kind of breadboard friendly. Um, and this is just a simple demo um, to show they're chainable. It's the same as the photo, and the colors are cycling. Breadboard friendly NeoPixels. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So. Um, in each LED, there's a little driver. It uses a one-wire sort of Manchester encoding. Um, we have a great and very easy-to-use Arduino library. Um, it won't be usable by uh, like a Raspberry Pi or anything that doesn't have very, very precise timing. Yeah. But it is usable for, by an Arduino and uh, any other microcontroller, pretty much. So you can use it with a propeller. I think somebody wrote a propeller library for this for this chip. 
um, picks, you know, ABRs, stuff like that. Um, they're really cute because there's only one wire to connect from one yeah. pixel to the other. You can chain pretty much as many as you want. Basically, it's how much RAM you've got on the Arduino. I think 500 is kind of where it starts to max out on the Arduino. Um, but you can always go to Omega and add more. Um, we also have these in like flexi strip, but I thought it might be handy to have them, you know, so you could have individual ones. I don't know. Yeah. And you know, they're they're on this little thin PCB. Um, I also put uh, the way I designed the circuit board is I put a little resistor on them, so you can drive them from uh, you can power them from five to nine volts. So you can because because they're constant current, they can be powered from a whole bunch of batteries without worrying about like frazzling yeah. them. Yeah, that's handy. Yeah. So you can potentially do a lot. Yeah, I mean, you can do more, and you, you know, you don't have to worry about the voltage drop yeah. over a, a long uh, course of wire. Just you use yeah. a higher voltage. That's the most asked question. People are like, what type of power do I need to power X number of LEDs? Yeah, I, 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 I did that with the floor pixels, too. The floor pixels have this resistor so that you can drive them from up to 9 volts DC. Unfortunately, the flexi strip we don't make, and so um, yeah. I'm going to ask them to make it with the resistor so you can drive it from higher voltages, but we'll see. Okay. Well, that's new products. Yay! Let's sit down. Alright. Alright. And then uh, let's um, let's open it up for uh, questions. Sure. Ask all your engineering questions. Oh, one of them was, uh, what is noise and how do you reduce it? That was from before. I'm going to uh, move the light while you... Uh, yeah, that's actually a really complicated question, but the answer is um, usually just use a quieter power supply. Um, that's probably the best answer because noise is very uh, complicated. Um, situation and you could have crosstalk, you could have hash. It depends on your circuit a lot. Um, but I would suggest with starting with a quieter power supply, uh, using a voltage regulator, maybe putting um, more capacitors on your power supply. Yeah, next up. I noticed that the Flora Accelerometer Comfort Sensor LSM303 page says you can only connect one to a Flora. What if I want to make a wearable one with accelerometer clipped to, one, to each shoe? Is there a different accelerometer I can use two of? Um, at this time, that, that sensor is it uses I squared C, and so you can only connect again one at a time. Um, you might be able to use like the ADXL 345 accelerometer that we have in the store. It's not floor compatible, but if you don't mind wiring it, um, you could wire that to I squared C as well, and you could have both of those on at the same time because it's a different brand of accelerometer, and each one has a unique address. But that address is only per brand. Okay. Uh, next up. For part number. Um, are you going to develop kits for iOS-based products? Yes. Sure. Um, we are. We do we have, have a great app. We do have uh, Circuit Playground is our yes. application. It's a cool calculator. And speaking of Circuit Playground, um, I'll, I'll get to this first question. Uh, any news on the new BeagleBone? No. Sign up, and very soon we'll be allowed to announce that it's available. Yes. Um, it's uh, the next generation BeagleBone. Um, we have a page on. Uh, Adafruit. Um, I think if you go to adafruit.com slash beaglebone, it'll take you to the sign-up page for the new one. It is pretty cool. Um, someone wanted to know um, when is Circuit Playground, the uh, kids show, coming out soon. And this is um, a little preview. Um, here's the puppets. Um, Aww. Yeah, this is kind of a family photo. Um, we got some 9 volt batteries. Colin in. is working on the first episode, and uh, it'll be out pretty soon. And here's the, the puppets in action, and uh, we're going to be introducing them um, slowly over time, um, we have to run an electronics company, so the puppet show, um, I'd love to just hang out and do the puppet show every day. Unfortunately, we have to ship manufacturing, yeah. test, debug, write tutorials, uh, the, make our demos work. Yeah, the puppet show doesn't uh, pay the bills quite yet. Uh, next up, uh, I have four ohm speakers I would like to connect to an 8 ohm amplifier. Can I simply add four ohms worth of resistors to the circuit to protect the speakers, what wattage should I use? Um, you, you can. Uh, what might be easier is just taking the two speakers and putting them in series, and then they add up to eight ohms. Um, and they won't be very loud. That's the problem. Um, but it will work. Uh, if not, then for the wattage, just take whatever wattage speaker, you know, it says on the back, like four watts, then just, you know, have a resistor that's an equal wattage. It's the easiest way to just do the math. Or look at the wattage output of the uh, the amplifier. If it says it's you know up to 10 watts, then use a 10 watt form resistor. Okay. Uh, shipping message to uh, Australia. Um, we have first class mail, we have express mail, and we have UPS. It is expensive to take a package and pick it up and ship it all the way across the world on planes. 
Yeah. Um, first class mail is pretty good. Um, there's weight and uh, cost limits, then gets bumped up to Express Mail or and Express UPS. Mail have tra has tracking. Which is yeah. Nice. And I guess you usually like. Yeah, a lot of companies don't offer first class mail because there's um, no tracking, and once it leaves the U.S., it's it. It's yeah, over. we have no control. Um, and uh, we offer it because most of the time it gets there, and if it yeah, doesn't. Yeah, like 99 percent. Yeah, time. and if it doesn't, let us know, and we always take care of it. Um, we don't physically get on a plane and deliver the package, though. Not yet. We're pretty uh, busy. Yeah. Um, someone said, where do I watch the show? Uh, the Circuit Playground, the kids' show, will be played during Ask an Engineer, and then it'll also be its own standalone video. And let's see here. I think we're going to do a couple more questions, and that'll be it. Um, are you going to come out with more application boards for mesh networks? plans right now for more mesh network stuff. Um, I think that if you want to experiment with mesh networks, XBs are the way to go. Um, the uh, market for people who want to experiment with mesh networks is not that big. Okay. So for now, I think the XB Series 2s are kind of what you want. Yeah. And then the other question is, are you guys going to go to Maker Fair West Coast this year? The answer is no. Um, we're going to be really busy with um, our new pick and place. This Ooh. is the one we're getting. The Samsung Flexible, Flexible Mounter SM482. It is on its way. This is what it looks like. But it's much bigger. It's not real size. 28,000 CPH. That's components per hour optimum. Uh, one gantry, six spindled heads. Uh, what's the maximum number of uh, feeders, it's Lady like 100 feeders. 100 something. feeders or so. Uh, the world's first auto loading and auto splicing smart feeder. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. We didn't get the smart feeders. No, we, we got the dumb feeders. <laughs> We're smart. We don't need smart readers. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's on its way. And so we're going to be busy with that. Yes. It might even show up next week. Yeah. Uh, what bland, brand of scope should someone get? Um, the Weagle, what we have in the store, is actually really great. It's um, one gig of samples per second, which is, which is actually really, really good. You want more samples per second. That's more important necessarily. That I, I find that's more important than um, just bandwidth. And it has up to 50 megahertz bandwidth. That'll cover like pretty much anything anyone would ever really need to do unless you're like a hardcore RF engineer or you're dealing with high speed FPGA stuff. 50 megahertz is really fast. Um, so yeah, we have uh, we have that in the shop and I, that's what I suggest as a starting out desktop um, scope. Triggers really well. It's uh, color, yeah. two probes, all sorts of math functions. And if you you're gonna get, get one, you can get a lot. It's 10% off right That's now. That's right, you can get 10% off. And um, yeah, I like it. That's why we carry it in the store. Okay, it's uh, trivia question time, lady. What? So fast? That's how fast things move. Wow. Trivia question time. What are the rules? Uh, the rules are uh, if you want something fabulous from our trivia question, you can't enter again. So uh, go read your copy of Pie Attic magazine. That's right. Uh, the first person with the correct answer with spelling wins the prize. What is the prize today? The prize is going to be a um, jar of the Bear Conductive. Uh, no, it's the, 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 the greeting card kit. The that's greeting card kit? Yeah, that's You want to do that instead? That's more useful because you get this okay. top of paint and you're like, what do I do with it? Yeah, the other rule is Lady Ada gets to decide what the prize is. No, it's just, <laughs> I just. I feel bad if you've got this. Congratulations, you got a tub of paint. <laughs> the, the paint's Hope you didn't already have one. <laughs> yeah. The paint's good for silk screening, but I yeah. think they, this is more fun. You're right. This is more fun. This is more fun. And I want more fun. So you'll get them. I mean, if you really want the tub, we'll give you the tub. But um, yeah, that's what you get. Uh, don't call someone on the phone if you are angry that you didn't <laughs> Okay. Ready? Here is a question. First person to type it in the chat wins. What Unix-like operating system just celebrated its 20th birthday this week? Which one? Here's a little visual clue. Which one is it? Do 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 do. Not Eastman Kodak. Not FreeBSD. Not Linux. Looking for a specific type of BSD, folks. Not Ubuntu. What? What? Pens. Slackware, no. Red Hat, no. Vim, no. Android, no. Man, you can't even Google this. NetBSD, congratulations. R. Collins, 06. Yeah, I'm not going to keep reading numbers after that. R. Collins, congratulations. Email supportadafruit.com. You get these fun cards. Blinky Celebrating cards. 20 years, NetBSD. It's a free, fast, secure, highly portable Unix-like operating, open source operating system. 
You installed NetBSD on stuff, didn't you? Yes. On what did you install it on? It, all sorts of things. It's a lovely operating system. Is it what is your favorite? You'd say one of your favorites? I think I think Top I really 10? I really like FreeBSD, which is yeah. very similar. Um, but yeah, NetBSD was is really great. Yeah. It's yeah. I mean, like NetBSD is what like so much stuff is based on. But it's interesting. It's like because you know the BSD license is so much more open. A lot of companies are based on USB on BSD, but don't necessarily give back. So yeah, because they can use it, they don't have to give anything back. They have to give anything back. Yep. So it's a little, it's a little tough because it is a really, yeah. um, really strong, really fast, really good operating system. But I think they made a decision on licensing that was different than Linux, and I think Linux yeah. benefited a little bit more from their, uh, yeah, from their slightly more restrictive licensing. Okay, well that's it for Ask an Engineer this okay. week, Lady Ada. Another big week. We are exhausted. Uh, taxes are coming up soon. I know. Do taxes. I am doing taxes. Got to do all sorts of things like that. I can't uh, just do my taxes in bare conductive pain. Yeah. Uh, this week I just have uh, MOSFET is home. He's all fine. Um, no cats. No pets meowing. allowed at the factory. Yes. There's a little picture of MOSFET. I'll do a video maybe for the next show. Um, code tonight is ITO. 10% off everything. Uh, it's not ITO. It's ITO. It's not called ITO. It's easier to say. Okay. ITO. ITO. I am drinking Ito and tea. It's Ito night here. Um, we'll see everybody uh, next week on the show. Uh, winner of the Ito and of the um, yeah yes, yes. winner of the uh, R Rollins are are uh, yeah. If you want, email support yeah. Adafruit, and you'll get this greeting card kit. Or if you really okay. want, just tap. And thank you everybody for all your support, all the great questions, all the people to show and tell, everybody out there, all the staff that's watching, everybody who is in today. We had a big day here at Adafruit. Yes. Uh, lots of folks ran. And with all that being said, here is your moment of Zener. <laughs>